Okay, so let us talk about certain uh, topics from complications in orthopedics. Okay, the short notes and the long questions. So, we start from the short note number one the myositis ossificans. The myositis ossificans. Okay, what exactly is myositis ossificans? Myositis ossificans is myositis ossificans is the definition how we define that. It is in heterotrophic, it is heterotrophic extraskeletal ossification, heterotrophic extraskeletal ossification in muscle plane, ossification in muscle plane. Okay. The most common, it is most commonly seen, second point, it is most commonly seen around elbow and second joint where it is commonly seen is the hip right so myositis ossificans okay uh, this can be this can be seen after exercise or you can say simple massage to elbow or vigorous exercise or vigorous passive stretching or vigorous passive stretching These are aggravating factors for myositis. These are aggravating factors for myositis ossificans. Right? See, in this section, we are going to discuss about the various instruments, implants, you know, the splints, traction which are used in orthopedics. And often these are uh, asked as your viva questions, right? So you have got an orthopedic table, 10 marks for that table, and then the examiner asks you to identify a particular implant or instrument like that. Okay, let's start with them. The first one that you see. Purposefully, I am using this uh, slide basically as the chapter of my book so that we don't miss up anything and you know what all has been mentioned along with the literature, right? So number one that you see on the screen, it is basically the screwdriver, right? Why do we use the screwdriver? Screwdrivers are used to put this slot that you see here over here, this area into the, uh, the head of the screws. This area will be definitely, this is placed into the head of the screw to tighten it or to loosen it, right? That's a simply screwdriver. Now, second important image is of the bone gouge that you see on the screen. Now, gouge is like an ice cream scoop, okay, like that. You'll have a slot inside this. Why this gouge is used, the bone scoop or the bone gouge it is used? It is used so that it is basically the concavity here. You introduce that into a particular bone, the particular part of the bone. For example, the iliac crest, like you take the scoop by the ice cream, you know, ice cream scoop, you have need to take out the ice cream. Similar way, you introduce this gouge into the bone to take out a bone graft. Right? So, you can use it to cut the cortical bones and to scoop out the cancellous bones. So, you just remove extra part of the bone which you need for the bone grafting purpose. Right? That's a bone gouge which is used basically to take out the bone for a bone grafting purpose. Okay? Now, see, when I compare the local temperature, it is best to take a, uh, just compare it up from the back of your hand. Okay? So, I compare here on this side and the same way I'll do on that side. Okay? Now, when I go for the tenderness, eliciting the tenderness. Now, how I go? I stand on the anterior side of the patient. Let me examine the left side only. So, how we start examining? So, we start the examination from this. This is the clavicle end. So, start just palpating over the clavicular area. Keep on palpating. If there is a fracture over here, the patient will wince in pain. Right? So, point one, keep on going down and down and laterally and laterally and laterally and laterally here. Once I reach laterally, you see, once I reach laterally, so where, from where is we started? the sternoclavicular joint. From sternoclavicular joint, we trace the full length of the clavicle, we reach to the lateral end of the clavicle and you know that this lateral end of clavicle basically is articulating with what? The acromion. So from here, when I trace it down, trace it down, I reach here. That is my acromion area. Okay. Once you reach to the acromion, follow the acromion only. So anterior side, going now to the back, turn back. So now, when it turns, you can see this is where I am tracing the margin of the scapula. So, I keep on doing like this and this and this and this and there I feel the depression. So, that is my margin of the scapula. So, I have checked for all the scapula. I started from the anterior side. I have gone up again and again and again and again and again. Okay. So, this is what I have done. So, we started from the front, the sternoclavicular joint, trace the whole clavicle, acromioclavicular joint, the acromion, the spine of the scapula and to the margin of the scapula. So, started from the anterior side and we have gone to the posterior side. So, let us talk something about the Trendelenburg test, right? 
the ideal way of doing the Trendelen book test is with the patient standing with his back towards the examiner. Like this patient is standing. What we do, we mark the iliac crest area. And as I marked on this side, right side, and the left side, I've already marked them, right? Then what we do, we ask the patient to stand on, let's suppose in this patient, we ask the patient to stand on the left side of the limb and lift his right side, okay? So when the patient lifts the right side, lift curve, right side, okay. See what happens? When he's trying to lift the right side, his right side of iliac crest, it almost remains at the same plane. In fact, if you observe very, very finely, this right side of iliac crest has gone a bit upward as compared to the left side. This means that his left side, that means his left side of abductors are working fine. They are intact. The abductor mechanism is okay. What is that abductor mechanism? That is a gluteus medius and the gluteus minimus, which are supplied by the superior gluteal nerve. So when he stands on the left side and he lifts his right side, we are checking for the left side. This abductor mechanism is okay. If the patient is having a defect in the abductor mechanism, then what would happen? When he tries to stand on the left side, if the left side is faulty, he won't be able to lift the right side of the leg. And instead of the iliac crest getting upward, it will just fall down onto the uh, down level, right? This is what you call a positive Trendelenburg sign. So do remember, we are checking for the side on which we are standing, right? So we are checking for the left side. We ask the patient to stand on the left side and lift the opposite side. So we are not checking the right side, we are checking the left side only. Ideal way is to check the patient from the back side, right? In your literature, you'll find otherwise also like you see the patient's ASIS. Okay, 